Hello again and welcome back to Eco Dream Venture. My name is Kelvin Simmons and today we're going to be talking about how SureStreamer makes power line networking practical, effective and safe. Now for those of you who've had the opportunity to watch our first video online, particularly on YouTube, you'll be familiar with this entertainment station we have here. Now that is because it's the same entertainment station we had in the earlier shoot. The only difference is we are no longer using the Aztec 200 Mbps power line adapter. We replace this with the WD LiveWire power line adapter. And because the WD Live Wire power line adapter has integrated four LAN ports, we no longer had the need to use the four port switch we used in the earlier switch as well and in the earlier shoot as well. So we removed this from the station as well. As, um, also on this table now you'd see a generic search protection device or SPD, which we use later in the in this video. So okay, today we're going to show you how SureStreamer makes power line networking practical, effective, and safe. So let's take a look. Now on the station again, we have the same PS3 game console. This is the same game console we had in the earlier shoot, and we're going to use it to stream the full HD file from the server using PowerLine. The video is going to be displayed on the entertainment station. We have a laptop that is going to track the connection rate of the WD LiveWire through its utility. And here we have the WD LiveWire PowerLine adapter, and as well we have the um, LCD TV. Now we try our best to adhere and conform to the uh, four impractical restrictions recommended to us by PowerLine experts. Powerline experts recommend that your powerline adapter and your interconnected equipment should not draw power supply from the same electrical wall outlet. Now because this station here draws power supply from one electrical wall outlet, we did not have the choice but to use a power strip and power bar. If you come up close, you'll see there are two plugs here. One is for the powerline adapter and the other one is for the interconnected equipment. But you notice that only the power supply for the WD Live wire has been turned on and the one for the interconnected equipment has been turned off just correspond and show you what this plug uh, corresponds to. So it, it, it's connected to this power strip here, which is for the interconnected equipment. You can see that it's all turned off. So it's essentially making uh, this power strip the only power supply for the um, WD LiveWire power line adapter. Now experts also recommend that your power line adapter and your interconnected equipment should not share the same power strip. Again, we had to do so because we were confined uh, to a single electrical wall outlet, but as I've shown you, the power supply for the interconnected equipment has been turned off. Also, experts recommend that you should not use a surge protection device in conjunction with your uh, power line adapter. So the surge protection device has been removed from the setup right here. And experts also recommend that any noise generating equipment, for example, your mobile or cell phone charger, should not be put in the same setup as your power line adap um, adapter setup. But you note that we actually do have a mobile phone here and it's plugged into a mobile phone charger. But as, as you can see, this mobile phone charger is plugged into the power strip that has its power supply turned off. Okay? Now, power line experts are not dumb people. In fact, industry players, uh, they are right to, to ask you to adhere or to observe all four impractical restrictions recommended by them. Because if you do, you get a pretty good uh, um, or decent connection rate as can be seen on the WD LiveWire utility here. Okay, this is WD LiveWire utility. You can see if you follow or adhere to all four impractical restrictions, you get a decent connection rate. Um, what is that? Approximately 80 Mbps out of um, 200 Mbps. Now, but immediately you realize that this um, uh, setup becomes um, highly impractical. Why? Uh, this is because your power line adapter is the only equipment in this setup that actually has power supply. Note that because all interconnected equipment power supply has been turned off, this laptop is actually running on um, backup battery. So, if you follow all four impractical restrictions recommended by experts, which that would mean that if you stream a full HD file from the server to the station right now, you'd only be able to view that file on your laptop. Okay? But let's see if we can actually create a um, power line adapter setup which is practical, effective and safe if we ignore all four impractical restrictions. Okay, now before we do that, let's take a look and see um, how a full HD file streaming is uh, fares when we actually stream it on this laptop here. Okay, so I'm going to go to the main folder where the video is going to be, the HD video. And I'm just going to stream a, a, a short full HD file from the server to this laptop. Okay. Okay, I'm just pump the volume up a little bit more. So as you can see, um, the audio and visual is pristine, the full HD file plays flawlessly. Let's take a look at the connection rate. Okay, now you can see the connection rate is showing oh, well, slightly around 80 Mbps, now it's 78 Mbps. Okay. So as you can see, it's, pre it's pretty obvious that you can actually stream a full HD file from the server 
to the laptop if you follow all four impractical restrictions from the experts, but it becomes highly impractical. So let's take a look and see what happens when we ignore these impractical restrictions. Let me just turn the volume down a little bit more, and I'm going to actually turn on a cell phone charger right now. Okay, so I'm going to turn it on. And you can see, one second here, power supply. You can see that uh, the mobile phone is actually charging. Let's take a look again at the uh, connection rate, shall we? Okay. Connection rate, as you can see, has dropped to 64 Mbps. All right. Now, let's take a look again and see what happens if we ignore more of the impractical restrictions. I'm going to turn on the power supply now for the PS3, the laptop, and the LCD TV. Okay. Just one second here. Now, we'll take a look and see if there's any. Let's take a look at the connection rate again. Uh, the connection rate is showing about... 68 Mbps or 62 thereabout. Okay, so let's take a look and see now what happens. If we've already turned on all the interconnected equipment, we no longer have to stream it from the laptop alone. So I'm going to turn this stream off, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn on the PS3, and we're going to stream the full HD file from the PS3, and it's going to be displayed on this 42 inch LCD TV. Okay? Uh, so I'm just turn this on. Okay, just give it a, a little bit uh, time to load. <clears throat> All right, so the PS3 has been turned on. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the same um, server. I'm going to go through the same main folder. I'm going to browse for the subfolder that contains the HD videos. And I'm going to play a slightly longer uh, full 1080p HD file. I'm going to pump the volume up a little bit more. Let's take a look and see uh, what happens when your interconnected e equipment is now turned on and it's being used from the same wall outlet as your power line adapter. Take note on the audio and visual, and we're going to show you the connection rate in a bit as well. So there you can see a little bit of lag on both the audio and visual. Let me just uh, turn the volume down a little bit more and take a look at the connection rate. Now the connection rate here shows approximately 55 Mbps. Oh, it's just gone up to 59 there about, okay? So you can see immediately, let me just turn this off, uh, um, the stream off now. You can see immediately that if you actually share one wall outlet uh, with the power line adapter and your interconnected equipment, your connection rate suffers. If you turn a mobile or nice jointing equipment like your mobile phone charger on, it uh, causes the connection rate to suffer. So now let's continue to ignore more impractical restrictions uh, by adding a surge protection device into this setup and let's take a look again at the uh, uh, readings, okay? Just gonna turn off PS3 for the moment. Turn off the LCD TV. And then here what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn off the power supply for the WD LiveWire power line adapter for the moment and then I'm gonna include the generic surge protection device I'm going to plug the WD Life Wire into the um, search protection device and I'm going to turn the power supply on. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do again is I'm going to um, turn on the PS3, turn on the LCD TV, and we're going to stream the same full HD file again and see um, the connection rate as well as the audio and visual. Okay? Just give it a moment to load. Okay, so it's up again. Uh, let me just go to the same network in this particular case, CalApp. Same main folder. I'm going to go to the same main, uh, same um, subfolder, and we're going to try and stream the same full HD file again. Okay, so now we have the interconnected equipment, noise generating equipment, all turned on together sharing the same wall outlet as your power line adapter and power line adapter is being plugged through a SPD so let's take a look at the audio and visual as well as the connection rate okay so immediately you can see that the audio and visual suffers from stutter and lag let's turn this volume down a little bit more and then we shall take a look at the connection rate. Let's take a look at the connection rate right now. You can see immediately that the connection rate has plummeted 
to 15 Mbps out of 200 Mbps. Okay. Let me send this off. Let me send this stream off. Okay. You can see it's still stuttering and lagging. All right. Now you you will note that it's, it becomes virtually impossible to create a power line adapter setup which is practical, effective, and safe if you ignore all four impractical restrictions recommended by experts. Now, in the next few minutes, we're going to show you how by just adding sure streamer on both the power line adapter setups, we're going to create a power line adapter setup which is practical, effective, and safe, and yet at the same time, we'll be able to ignore all four impractical restrictions, and yet make sure that your power line adapter comes out with flying colors. So thank you for staying with us, and stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, so now we're going to include our sure streamer into both the power line and adapter setups. Starting with this entertainment station right here, we're going to replace the generic SPD you can see here with this particular sure streamer model. But before we can do that, we need to turn off the power supply for both the power line adapter and the interconnected equipment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch off the uh, PS3 for the moment, and I'm going to turn off the LCD TV. And then now I'm going to proceed to turn off the individual power supply for all the interconnected equipment you can see here. Okay. Once that's done, I'm going to turn off the power supply for the interconnected equipment, turn off the power supply for the WD Life wire, and then remove the generic SPD. Okay, so I'm going to remove this. And then now, if you come closer, you'll see how I'm going to include the Sure Streamer into this particular setup right here. So, this is the Sure Streamer model. I'm going to include, I'm going to plug the Sure Streamer into this power strip. WD Life wire power supply plugs into the Sure Streamer as such. Interconnected equipment plugs into the Shure streamer. Okay, so just like that, I'm just going to turn on the power supply for the Shure streamer, and then I'm going to go ahead and turn on the power supply for all the interconnected equipment right here. And then now again, I'm going to go ahead and stream the full HD file from the server through the P uh, PS3, and it's going to be displayed on the LCD, uh, LCD TV right here. Okay, Let's just give it a few moments for it to load, and then we'll go ahead and stream the full HD file. Okay, so the PS3 is booting up. Now it's all right. It's up. Let's go to the network. The same network. We're going to go through the same main folder, and then we're going to search for the same subfolder, sample videos, and HD videos, and then we're going to stream the same uh, full HD 1080p file from the server. Now while this is loading, please pay attention to both the audio, visual, and then we take a look at the connection. Let me just pump up the volume a little bit. So far, so good. Okay, so as you can see, the audio is and visual is pristine. We'll just turn the volume down a little bit more, and then we'll take a look at the connection rate. Okay, so let's take a look at the connection rate right now. If you close up, you can see that the connection rate is hovering about um, 65 Mbps out of a possible um, 200 Mbps, okay? Now that is about the same connection rate as when we first streamed the full HD file through the laptop when the WD Live Wire was the only equipment with the power supply. But in this particular case, the circumstances is different. In fact, now we have the power line adapter and the interconnected equipment all turned on sharing power supply from one source through the Shure streamer. Not only that, don't forget we have a mobile or cell phone charger right now which is turned on and it's charging the mobile phone right here. And yet, we are able to still get approximately 65 Mbps um, as compared to when it was initially started. Okay, so this is just half um, the story. We need, to just, we need to go to the server end and include sure streamer that side as well. So let me just turn the stream off uh, for a bit. We'll continue this as soon as we finish installing sure streamer at the server end. So why don't you just follow me? Okay, so here you can see we have another WD Live Wire power line adapter. You can see in this particular case, the WD Live Wire power line adapter draws power supply from a single wall outlet, and the interconnected equipment has its different wall outlet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to include the Shure, stream, Shure streamer in this particular case. It's a different model um, into this setup here. So I'm going to turn off the equipment power supply again. Just log this terminal off first.
Okay, great. And then I'm going to turn off the power supply for all the interconnected equipment you see here. Turn off the power supply for the W Life wire. Unplug both um, the three pin plugs. And then this is how I'm going to include Sure Streamer. So this Sure Streamer plugs into the wall outlet. And then the WD Life wire plugs into the Sure Streamer. Interconnected equipment plugs into the Sure Streamer. Okay? All right, and then I'm going to turn on the power supply again for the Sure Streamer and go ahead and turn on the interconnected equipment. Okay, we'll just see whether it boots up and then we can go back to our entertainment station and perform the same streaming again. All right, great. So now we're going to go back to our entertainment station and we're going to stream the full HD file from the server and we're going to take the connection rate as well as observe the audio and visual. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna go to the same network again, same main folder, same subfolder, same HD file, and the same um, 1080p file is gonna be streamed from the server. Now while this is loading, again, pay attention to both the audio, visual, and then we'll show you the connection rate in a bit. Just pump up the volume. So we continue from where we left off. As you can see, the audio, uh, the audio and visual is still pristine. Just give it a little bit more to see whether there's any lag or stuff like that, yeah? Okay, so you can see the audio and visual, no problem, no lag, no stutter. Let me just turn down the volume and take a look at the connection rate. Now let's take a look at the connection rate. You can see that the connection rate has been increased to 137 Mbps out of a possible 200 Mbps. Mbps. That is beyond its initial connection rate, even at 70 to 80 Mbps when we first started. Okay, let me just turn off the stream right now. So as you can see, by just adding the Sure Streamer at both the power line adapter end, we managed to create a power line adapter setup which is practical, effective, and safe, and yet ignore all four impractical restrictions recommended by the experts, and at the same time, enhance the connection rate of your power line adapter. Now, you can expect Sure Streamer to be in stores uh, globally as soon as we get a global partner. And we needed global partners because we won't be able to cope with the demand of sales as soon as we launch Sure Streamer. In fact, we've been trying to convince a potential global partner to collaboratively launch Sure Streamer with us for the past few years, but with no luck. This video may help. Okay, so if you're at all convinced, interested, shell-shocked, or perhaps a little curious about the results you see in this demonstration, we urge you to contact us. Give us a call, write to us, email us, or even fly down here to see the video or demonstration first uh, in first hand, because we really hate to see a great product like Sure Streamer go to waste. So thank you for your time and thank you for following us. My name is Calvin Simmons from EcoDream Venture, and remember, with Sure Streamer, you'll never miss a bit.